How's it going, world? This is Grant with Retro Games More coming at you with a new video, finally. It took me so long to actually get back into the videos. Uh, what I want to do today uh, for the new year is to actually start getting back into it, start getting some uh, getting some filming done and, and complete some projects and, and LPs that I've been, uh, been delaying for so long. So uh, within the past year, uh, since I haven't been actually uploading to YouTube, I've actually moved into my new shop and got a whole new work area you can probably see back there. Tons of workspace, a lot of junk, and all that, all that stuff. So I'll go over and I'll show you my whole collection later. But today, what I wanted to do is see if we can actually repair a flat screen TV, and I'll show it to you real quick. And there it is, right there. Let me flip the camera around. I'm using my new Sony. Well, it's not no, it's an older camera, but it's a Sony Bloggy. It's one that actually flips around, so I can flip the lens around. So this is a handsfree, and I'm. Assuming that Handsprey was maybe the um, the prelude to uh, Hands G, I'll have to have looked that up and confirm it. But uh, I know that Hands is generally a pretty good name brand. I've actually had some monitors uh, by that name brand before that have been some of the best monitors I've actually owned. Uh, a customer brought this in to our uh, secondary location and said that we could have it. That it's not powering on. Uh, they don't know what's wrong with it, but it's just not working for them. But it really is a a nice TV. It was manufactured in 2006. And let's take a look at the specs on the back there. Let's see. Ooh, let it fall over. Let me tip it over. I gotta set it down anyway, so we can actually take it apart. So it is a handsprey. It's a JT02-37U1. Dash zero 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 G. Uh, so I'm guessing it's a 37 inch, possibly just because that's in the the product number. Um, yeah, manufactured October 2006, or at least that's the yeah that's the date that we have on there. The reason I actually am interested in fixing this is uh, we have three HDMI ports, which is pretty awesome for an older flat screen. Um, we have dual coax in for uh, antenna and cable input. Uh, we got the D sub or the VGA port for uh, you know legacy monitors or legacy you know uh, connections. Uh, we have the composite. Uh, and we have a lot of audio in and out as well, as well as PC audio and earphones. So this TV kind of had it all back in the day when this one was was going. And I'm, I'm hoping that it's just a simple uh, capacitance issue. Maybe there's an electrolytic capacitor in there that needs to be replaced, or something obvious at least. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set the camera down, and then I'm going to go through disassembly. And we should just have one screw here. One screw on the other end. I don't think the mount holes up here have any screws in them, uh, but we have six silver screws across uh, underneath of the actual uh, I.O. and we have two screws within the actual hand uh, handle. So I'm going to take all the screws out. We're going to see if we can snap the case open, and then uh, I'll come back to you once we get that done. And I'll probably just fast forward it through so you can actually see me disassemble the whole unit here. Okay, it actually looks like we have three more screws right across the center of the chassis, so we'll go ahead and get those. And it looks like, yeah, it's just three. I was looking like there might be two other mount holes there, but it looks just three. So. And there's three more above it, so they're kind of, kind of in disguise, so we'll go ahead and get those. So it looks like we have 18 screws all together in this unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to actually pop it apart real quick. And hopefully it won't be that difficult. I might need to get a flathead screwdriver for this one. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to grab a flathead screwdriver real quick. Alright, 
guys, we're going to keep going at it. There's a lot, a lot of hooks around the side here. So we're going to keep going at it until we can get it all unhooked. And like I said, it'd probably be best if you used maybe like a plastic bezel or something, especially if you're working on this TV for somebody else. Or if you don't mind getting the plastic damaged or scratched, then go at it. But this is probably the most tedious case I have cracked open ever. And I've opened up a lot of TVs before. Okay, you see we're starting to get it open there now. So we just got to keep going around the TV. It's a slow process. And actually, I've probably been fighting with it for about 20 minutes now, and there's probably a lot of footage that I'm going to be cutting out, so... <laughs> you just got to be diligent, that's the whole thing. And with this TV, the actual plastic back comes off, so it's, sometimes you'll see with a lot of uh, LCDs that the front plastic bezel actually comes out, and the back stays on, that's where a lot of housing is. that way. It's good to have a good wedge essentially is what we need. And it might be enough for us to actually lay it down and see if we can actually Okay, so I'm going to pull the camera in and we're going to get a closer look. Okay, so here it is. It is open. Let's go ahead and pull it up. I'm going to turn the camera around so we can get a better look. So here is the inside. It only took 30 minutes to get into. <laughs> Uh, we got something rattling around in there. I think that's probably just a plastic clip that I broke off trying to get it in, get into the case. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this back shielding here. And then we're going to take a look at uh, all the PCBs, see if there is any type of uh, component damage or any type of uh, issues related to heat. Then you can see over in the corner there, some spider webs. So definitely have some age that we're working with. I mean, you know, 2006, that's... Uh, geez, <laughs> that's what, eight years ago already? So it's, it's kind of crazy thinking about it like that. Uh, but yeah, I want to go ahead and take off this back uh, can here. We probably have uh, eight to ten screws or something. I'll just set the camera up here so you can watch the process. Probably nothing too special though. I don't know if you can see it at this angle. And then make that foil tape strong. Ah, no, there's a hidden screw. Hidden screw underneath the foil tape. Okay, so 
So there we are. And right away, I see exactly what I wanted to see. All right, guys, so these are your main boards. You have your, your main board with the main processor, the main video out, and probably inverter soldered onto this board. Right here, this is your power supply. So this is the main board that I wanted to have issues because this is the easiest one to diagnose and repair. So let's take a look. I don't know if you can see it from here. We're going to zoom in and take a look at our issues. Our issues are swollen electrolytic capacitors. There's a possibility that we're going to have issues with other capacitors on this board, but that might not come to fruition until later down in its life anyways. Generally, if it's not swollen or has obvious obvious issues with it, like electrolyte fluid coming out of the bottom or something like that, generally it'll be okay. Uh, so what we need to do is replace these two caps here and look under the shielding and see if there is anything under there. Besides those two caps, at least just from a standard view right now, ah, okay, I do see some more issues, and I bet that these are the ones that are really contributing to the problem. Underneath this, underneath this cover here, this RF cover, or maybe it's just uh, an extra heat sink to help dissipate the heat that are cre is created by the transistors on the side there. Let's go ahead and take this off real quick. Sorry, I'm doing it with one hand. So. But this is this is a very good thing. I'm pretty pretty positive once we replace these electrolytic capacitors, we'll probably have a working TV. Now I'm looking at the the main board here. You see that it has electrolytic capacitors on it as well, uh, but all those look really good. Uh, they don't really get the butt of the heat that the ones on the main power supply do. So let's pull this top of this can off, if you will. And we have four more swollen electric, electrolytic capacitors. So on this power supply, in total, I'll have to remove it and do a little bit more deeper look at it and make sure all the components are good. But on this board, as it stands now, we have six swollen electrolytic capacitors. So let's let's take a look at this from a technician standpoint. And I'll flip the camera around. There we are. How's it going? So from a point of a technician's view here, um, you'd be looking at retail the caps probably aren't that much I mean they might you know, range from two to ten dollars you know a piece but you know resell this is how generally uh, generally priced out say if this was a client and they wanted to get it repaired and that was the only main issue that we had to target let's just say you know best case scenario we replace those six caps and it works again and it works uh, in a very stable position uh, you'd be looking at probably ten dollars a cap so you'd be looking at about sixty dollars for the parts because you gotta have you have to have that markup you have to have that money and generally, for something like this, this case was kind of a beast to get apart. I'd probably say $60 labor. And that's actually pretty fair. Um, you know, if you take it to any other technicians, you know, I imagine they would either tell you to get you a new TV because it's a 2006 model or, you know, or give you this quote of three to $400, which is not worth it, you know, because you can replace this TV reasonably, you know, for getting an LED backlit TV. I don't know if this one's CCFL. Yeah, it is. This one's CCFL backlit. So... You know, of course, yeah, you're going to do better to get an LED TV, but, you know, $120 to get this one up and going, you know, that's probably $80 to $100 cheaper than buying a replacement one. Uh, you know, that money can go a long way for some folks, and we can get you a good working TV. So, especially with the IOs on this unit, which are really nice, you got three HDMI, you know, and you have multiple audio in, as well as headphone, you know, some of these components, some of these IOs aren't available in later model TVs. So, you know, that comes at a you know, a premium there as well. So this TV, when it was released, was probably uh, fairly expensive. I might look it up and give you some uh, statistics on that as well. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to remove this power supply. I'm not going to film it. What I'm going to do is just film the main part of me actually getting the capacitors out and get them replaced. So I'll show you what it probably takes if you, by chance, very slim chance, working on the exact same TV that I'm working on. But who knows, you might. I'll put it in the, uh, the actual... Um, tags below the model number and everything. It looks like we have two screws that we're holding on the top of the can, top of the, well I'm going to say it's probably just for extra heat dissipation because of the transistors here, uh, which didn't help obviously because these swole anyways, but sometimes capacitors just swell because they're, they're really crappy, crappy uh, manufactured. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six screws that actually hold the board down. And we're going to have the main power lead right here. So this would be power out. Or no, this would be power in because we're getting power in. I don't know what I'm talking about. So we get power in here that goes into, you know, from the wall into our power supply. 
and then we're going to have these cables here and generally they just pull out and it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get those mixed up it looks like they're all kind of proprietary in design as well as if you film it then you can always use that as a reference so there we go we got one ground lead here so you keep that in mind but yeah besides those what four plugs and six screws we'll be able to get this out so i'll see you in just a second